I'm going to touch on the use of plastic um, for venting, even though vast majorities of the manufacturers we recommend, or excuse me, represent, allow PVC and CPVC. This is actually an extrapolation from um, Charlotte Pipe, uh, probably the world leader, the, the national leader at least anyways, in PVC and, and uh, CPVC manufacturing. And at the end of the day, it says, um, plastic pipe and fittings used to vent appliances shall be installed in accordance with then the appliance manufacturers installed in constructions. They put down here in bold writing, okay? Right down here, the standard specification does not include requirements for pipe and fittings intended to be used to vent combustion gases. Basically, that's the lawyer's way of saying, hey, thanks for all the business on the venting, but should you have a failure, don't come knocking, right? Because not one of the listings that Charlotte Pipe or any other PVC and CPVC manufacturer go through includes combustion gases, not one, okay? Um, the majority, if not all, of your uh, human fatalities from CO poisoning and high efficiency applications has been unsealed or unglued PVC joints. So the contracting world tends to prefab or prefit a bunch of pieces. Let's put it together, make sure it's right before we glue it. And then, you know, the boss calls and blah, blah, blah. And he gets back to work and oops, he forgot to actually glue that joint. Now, a lot of the inspectors in the communities and so on and so forth have gotten better about looking for the purple primer because the glue itself is clear, okay? So they're gonna look for the purple primer at every joint to see that you've done it. But at the end of the day, that pipe is still not listed or certified by the pipe manufacturer as vent material, okay? So I like to throw that out there, just peace of mind for myself. Yes, again, manufacturers we represent say you can do it. It's not Mulcahy's advice to do such. <clears throat> know the appliance and its requirements. So what this chart here is showing is basically temperature limitations of a few products. So if you have PVC, CPVC, polypropylene pipe, and then you have stainless pipe, okay? Your truest listed category four materials are gonna be these two, all right? Biggest difference between the two, temperature ratings. Approximately 215 to 230 degrees, approximately 450 to 500 degrees, okay? Now, if you're running a true condensing application, 500 degrees shouldn't be of any concern, <laughs> okay? Because the idea is that your flue gases are something cooler than 140, so that we're actually condensing those gases and getting the high efficiency we're looking for, okay? That's why the 215, 230 degrees here should be just fine. However, the caveat to polypropylene piping, your appliance must be listed and certified to use said piping. So there are still some condensing manufacturers, uh, condensing appliance manufacturers that cannot pass the test to certify themselves for use with this, okay? Um, because their flue temps will be too hot. Or some will say, okay, you can use this, but we have to put on a certain adapter and then uh, like a high limit switch type thing to if the appliance gets too hot or there's a failure within the heat exchanger, it doesn't melt the flu. Um, so kind of outside of that, it's really all this is. Again, PVC people often overlook, you know, at the end of the day, PVC has 149 degree limitation. That's the limitation of the PVC manufacturer. If I am trying to create 180 degree water, how do I cool flue gases to less than 149 degrees? Well, you technically can't, right? That's like reverse physics. I'm not an engineer, don't pretend to be one, but I know that much, 